it's the 3rd of September now, and we've awoken to a much better morning here at Dooling Point. There were a few other vans here with us last night, and some of them are already on the move. Time to do some chores. Five. We're only going to put these four in and then we'll do yeah. the rest where it's uh, calm. Yeah. Have you got a five litre yeah, left as so well? Five yeah, five well. We're climbing the coast road out of Doolin now, on our way to the Cliffs of Moha. In the distance, you can see Dunagor Castle. It's quite impressive as we drive up to it, but it's closed at the moment due to COVID. So many abandoned cottages in Ireland, and all of them must have a story to tell. It's a very scenic place to go for a walk or a cycle ride. Travelling southwest now on the R478. What an amazing difference this weather is to yesterday. Just down the road here is the entrance to the Cliffs of Moha. We haven't booked, so we're hoping they're going to let us in. Things are really quiet here at the moment due to COVID. So they sold us tickets, no problem at all. So we never thought we would have this glorious sunshine this morning. Still windy, but, and a bit cold, but way better than yesterday. Down there, there is a viewing platform, and there are two of these that allow you to see the cliffs from two different angles. This is O'Brien's Tower, and it was built to mark the highest point of the cliffs. The cliffs consist mainly of Namurian shale and limestone. At their highest point, the cliffs are 214 metres or 702 feet high. Every now and then, bits of foam are being blown up over the cliffs, but it's quite hard to capture them on film. I could sit and watch these birds soaring all day. Amazing the skills they have in flying in such strong winds. In years gone by, wealthy tourists would be wined and dined on this ledge. They have a good visitor centre here which is being buried underground to protect the views. A school party is coming down the steps, but there's really very few people here today. Carol's gone ahead to have a look around O'Brien's tower, whilst I take some long shots from the top of the cliffs. The tower was allegedly built for all the tourists that came to visit the cliffs, but there is an alternative story that O'Brien built it for his fancy women that he was courting.
strong winds hit the base of the cliffs and are deflected upwards and they're taking with it quite a lot of salty spray today. There's no drone flying allowed here which is understandable due to all the people, but it would have been great to be able to send it out to sea and look back towards the cliffs. I think it's quite amazing how these cliffs can withstand this constant battle with the sea. So Carol's cooked a lovely breakfast in the camper van. We're just back from our walk uh, on the cliffs of Moha. How do you pronounce it? Moha, I think. Moha. Moha. And as you can probably hear, the wind has got back up and the rain is lashing down again. So we escaped from the cliffs just in time. Anyway, breakfast looks nice. Look at this. Half an hour later, bright sunshine again. On the right, we're passing O'Brien's Monument. This is the R478, and it's a really nice, smooth road on this section. O'Brien was obviously an important man, as this is his bridge. And on the left hand side, we've got Dow Castle. This lovely little town is called La Hinge, but I bet I haven't pronounced that right. On the way out of the town, I caught a glimpse of some surfers, so I pulled over to take a look. Some people are well wrapped up and protected from the cold, whilst others have donned wetsuits and are preparing to walk into those icy waters. It's like Piccadilly Circus here. I don't think I've ever seen as many surfers trying to get into the sea at the same time. These women are showing uh, the boys how to do it. This is the town of Kilrush. It's getting a bit late, so we are on the hunt for pizza. Because of COVID, we ordered the pizza on the phone. So Carol's just popped into Roma to collect it. You got the pizza, let's pizza. have a look at it. Will it be as nice as the other one? We've gone for a meat feast pizza, but this was the largest one they did. Pizza is so easy to keep in the fridge and rejuvenate in the Ridge Monkey. The pizza's really good. Having a takeaway, it's not only tasty, but it gives you a night off from cooking and the washing up. Right, we've had our pizza, and now we just need to find somewhere to sleep tonight. We're on our way to a lake inland, which we found on Park for Night. I can remember when we got the van that I used to get quite anxious about where we were going to stay. And I'd spend quite a lot of time looking up places and doing research, but that's all gone now. Uh, we've done now about a hundred nights, I think, since we got this van. 
and we don't even think about finding somewhere these days. Right, this is the lake we were looking for. My first observation is I'm not too keen on how close that water is to the road. Looks like another one or two feet and it could overflow. The other problem we noticed here was the sky was thick with midges and that's a no-no. This is another park for night suggestion and it's on what they class as an abandoned quay on the Shannon Estuary. So, a question to all you budding camper vanners, would you stay the night here? In my view, whenever you pull up to a parking location, you'd have to do a little risk assessment. Is there anything that could happen during the night that might affect you? So my initial concern here was, how much further is this water going to rise? Luckily, I've got an app that allowed me to check that. And I found that actually we were almost at high tide. I was taking a few shots when I spotted these goats who were actually on a very small island. Uh, maybe about 100, 200 metres away from us. We made the decision that we would stay and I then moved the van further towards the camera and on the left hand side to give plenty of room for anyone who needed to access this tug. You know, there's one thing that I've been really impressed with in Ireland and that is the number of life belt rings that I've seen they seem to be all over the place, which is absolutely fantastic. There's a family of swans just beyond these reeds, and I think they've spotted us. There's a small strip of land between us, so it'll be interesting to see how they cross that. So, they obviously like to swim rather than walk because they found a little spot where the water is deep enough for them to get through. So they're all now going through exactly the same spot. Lovely and peaceful here. So we're going to settle down now, relax and get some sleep. Another fry up, which is very naughty, but we don't make them much at home. Nice breakfast, Charlie. Good we parked up here initially last night, and then it suddenly occurred to me, what if another tug came on this pier? So we moved down the road there, just so that we wouldn't be in the way of anybody. And uh, we had a very peaceful night there. If you look in the middle of the channel there, you can see there's quite a current rip through here once the tide is on its way out. You'll have seen in the clips last night that water came up quite high here. And I've got a, an app on my phone that uh, can tell me what the tides are. And that's really useful. So I knew here last night that as we arrived we were just reaching high tide and it wouldn't come any higher. So the tide last night was 5.1 meters. We booked our ferry home this morning didn't we? We did. When are we going? We're booked on the eight o'clock sailing from Rosslare to Fishguard on Wednesday the 9th of September. Because we've had enough of this rain. <laughs> you have. Yeah you could go on forever. I could. But look at it outside again. It's pouring down and it's blowy.
there's history almost everywhere you look in Ireland. Look at this tower that's in the back garden of this uh, house. This is Clare Castle and we're just crossing the River Fergus. I couldn't find any information about this tower. It may be that it's in a private residence. So you may be asking why have we booked the ferry home? The primary reason is I'm running out of medical supplies that I need every day. And I also want to ensure that we get a crossing in good weather. So I've been monitoring the weather forecast and we've picked what looks to be the best day for crossing the Irish Sea. We've still got a few days left to explore, but there are going to be many, many places that we have not managed to see on this trip. Carol and I decided before we got here that we were not going to race around the country and try and see just the major sites. It's pretty easy to cross over to Ireland and when Covid is back under control we will come back and finish the tour. We're entering Limerick now and on the left is Tommen Park which is the home of the Munster rugby team. On the right hand side here is St Munchin's Roman Catholic Church. And here is the River Shannon. This is what we've come to have a look at. King John's Castle, built in the 13th century. Now I wasn't feeling too great at this point, so Carol will take you around the castle. Building work on the castle began in 1212 and took decades to complete. There were several sieges here in the 17th century. In 1651, the entire city of Limerick came under siege for four months as Oliver Cromwell was keen to regain control in Ireland. One of the oldest surviving features of the castle is the Twin Towered Gatehouse, built in 1212. The water gate in the west wall was the more used entrance as supplies were brought in via the River Shannon. King John's Castle today is one of the best preserved Norman castles in Europe. Well Carol certainly seemed to enjoy her tour around the castle so I hope you enjoyed it too. Well, that's all we have for you for this episode. We do hope you enjoyed our video. And if you did, then please remember to hit that subscribe button and then you'll be notified of more adventures from the Little Red Camper.